with you. Anne, what on earth's the matter? He has, Cass, he has. Has he indeed? Well, it's no more than you deserve going out with strange men. Oh, don't be so low. He's asked me to marry him. Marry him? But you don't know a thing about him. You've only met him for five minutes. I know all about him. He's a doctor and he comes from a place called Finchin and he's got three aunts and... And? And I know he's the only man in the world for me. When's the wedding? Thursday. Are you mad? Delirious. Well, we couldn't make it Wednesday because they have to have 24 hours notice. Well, thank goodness for that. How many aunts did you say? Three. But they never come up to London, so I wondered if we could have the reception here. There's no one I want except you and Alec. I'd feel happier here. Here it is, then. Bless you, darling. Be happy, and congratulations. Congratulations! congratulations. Speech. Speech! Come Speech. on, a Speech! Well, uh, thank you. And, uh, thank you very much. Uh, having only known Anne for a week, I, I, I really haven't had time to prepare a speech, but... Uh, well, thank you very much. Oh, well, uh, do it. Um, have you got to find a house, or are you moving in on the family mansion? Uh, no, we're going to live at Crow Hollow. There's plenty of room, and the aunts would never forgive us if we didn't. Queer name, Crow Hollow. It sounds like a quotation. Crow Hollow and unleash the dogs of war. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not so queer. Uh, it's built in a hollow, and there used to be hundreds of crows. Not anymore? No, they suddenly disappeared about 50 years ago. Everybody was very pleased. They were supposed to bring ill luck to the house. Well, mm -hmm. you country doctors certainly move fast. I suppose you're emulating Solomon Grundy. Born on Monday, christened on Tuesday. Met Anne on Wednesday. Married on Thursday. <laughs> honeymoon on Friday. Busman's honeymoon at that. He's got to go and have a look at a patient. And so have you, incidentally. She's a very old friend of the family's, and she insists on meeting the new bride. Oh, couldn't she wait? <laughs> Well, she may not have another opportunity. Only a 10% chance. There's a pronounced aortal murmur, and the surgical shock is bound to be considerable. Blood count? 91,000. Would it be all right for my wife to see her? Don't let her talk too much. How do you do, my dear? I'm sorry you're so ill. I asked Robert to tell you to come alone so that I could talk to you. I wanted to see what sort of a girl he'd so suddenly decided to marry. Do you think I'll do? I think you should be just what he needs. Poor Robert. I love him a great deal, my dear. Why do you say poor Robert? Did I say that? He's been very much alone. He's an orphan, you know. So am I. Are oh, you, my dear? It hasn't hurt you, I can see that. You've had someone to love you and take care of you. That's true. Daddy only died two years ago. Poor Robert. He's been alone ever since he was a child. There was his grandfather and, and then the three aunts to look after him. Yes. Yes. Three of them and that old house. Don't let him take you to Crow Hollow. It's no good to either of you. It, 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 it. Miss Girl. There's something important she has to tell me. Please go. Doctor. Will you come, please? I'm sorry, darling. I shouldn't have brought you. Bob, she said... Yes? Nothing. Welcome home, darling. Oh, Bob, it's lovely. She's a bit short-sighted. Back again, Robert? Hello, Aunt Judith. What a surprise you gave us all. <laughs> How'd you do, Aunt Judith? How'd you do, my dear? I hope you'll be very happy at Crow Hollow. Now, you must excuse me, but I'm very excited. You see, I'm a naturalist, and I've just received a rare specimen from Australia, a spider. <gasps> Such a beautiful creature. A body like brown velvet and 43 inches long. Oh, very interesting. You 
to see my laboratory. Come any time. I'll show you my specimens. You made a good impression. <laughs> what nonsense. She was much more interested in her spider. <laughs> Aunt Opal, this is Anne. Robert, she's lovely. Of course, we expected Robert to have good taste, but he's shown so little interest in women, we weren't quite sure what his taste would be. Must have been quite a shock for you to hear he was married. Not a shock, dear, just a rather large surprise, knowing Robert. <laughs> well, now you'd like to see your room. Come this way. Hester's gone visiting with some of her soup. She should be back at any time. She's quite famous for her soup, Anne. She works out all the ingredients and the flavors herself. It's quite wonderful, really. But you'll be sampling it yourself. But Anne isn't going to be ill, Aunt Opal. No, dear, of course not. He means that Hester only makes her soup for sick people. But I'm sure she'll be delighted to make some for you. Aunt Judith seems very taken up with her new spider. Oh, those horrid spiders, how I hate them. And now a poisonous one. It'll escape and bite us all in our beds. That's what I tell Judith. But I believe she'd like us to be bitten. Honestly, Robert, she's my own sister, but I don't understand her. Sometimes I think she must be a changeling. Do you like spiders? Oh, they're not my favorite insect. Oh, well, there it is. We all have our own peculiarities. But I can understand Hester's soup better than Judith's horrible specimens. I've shifted you into the Chinese room, Robert. There's more space in it than in your old room. And anyway, the Chinese room is the best bedroom. It's where our dear mother died. Quite 40 years ago. Do you like it, darling? The room? Well, yes, of course. Oh, I'm so glad. We were up till all hours getting it ready for you. Well, now I'll leave you to freshen up. Tea will be ready in a few minutes. Oh, yes. A message from Dr. Herbert. Uh, something about Abel Jackson's peculiar symptoms. Oh. Well, I'd better go down. Oh, well, if you must be so conscientious. Well, we'll look after Anne and I'll show her the house. There's so much to tell her. Such an old place. Such a lot of things happening under its roof. Hmm. Must you go? Well, I ought to. Are you a very conscientious doctor? Well, I try to be. More than you're a conscientious husband. Saved by the bell. I believe the crows are coming back. I saw two of them in the elms yesterday, and there's another there now. Nonsense, Hester. The crows haven't nested there for 20 years. That's still no reason why they shouldn't come back. I'll tell Dexter to set a trap. Maybe we could catch one of them. <laughs> They'd be too quick for you. Why do you always have to kill everything, Judith? I don't have to kill anything. But it's just that it makes some things easier to study. Ah, the new bride. I'm Hester, as I expect you guessed. How do you do, Aunt Hester? My word, you don't carry much flesh on your bones. We must feed you up here. Now, how do you like your tea? Um, milk, no sugar, please. And how shall I find my patients, Aunt Hester? How many of them have you killed off by persuading them not to stick to their diets? Diets? If instead of dieting them, you give them a course of good meals, they would have no patients left. They'd all be cured. I don't hold with diet. Starvation. Nonsense. Freedom, I say. Don't you agree with me, Anne? Well, it would depend on the illness. Exactly. That's what I say. You can do some parish work with me. I go in the pony cart, you know. Room for two. It does a great deal more good than fussing over dirty-minded insects or a house. Insects are not dirty-minded. That's the last thing one could say of them. What about the female spider that consumes her husband if she gets half a chance? Oh, not spiders, please. We've had quite enough of them today with Judith's new specimen. And dear, your teeth. Hester talks so much about the benefit of food, but she's not giving Anne a chance to eat any. It doesn't matter. I'm really not hungry. Robert, pass Anne the tomato sandwiches. I hope you'll like it here, Anne. Oh, I'm sure I shall. I hope you remember to bring Willow a present. Who? Oh, of course. Where is she, by the way? Oh, she's gone to the cinema. Opal spoils that child disgracefully. We all do come to that. Who's Willow? She's the aunt's little ray of sunshine. Now, Robert, drink your tea and get... 
call. The moment we finish, I'm going to show Anne the house. This was Robert's room ever since he was quite tiny. Couldn't we be in here? I'd love it. Oh, no, dear. You and Robert must have the best bedroom. Now, who is that? It's Marguerite. Marguerite. Robert's mother. Oh, yes, I can see now. She was lovely. I think if I may, I'll hang it in our room. But it wouldn't look anything against the Chinese wallpaper. No, I suppose not. We thought of keeping this room just as it is for Robert's child when he has one. Now, come with me, dear. There's something else I want to show you. This room is different. I wonder if you'll like it. Oh, it's lovely. Whose is it? Willow's. Willow? But who is Willow? Willow is our sort of companion. But we always treat her more like one of the family. It was an awfully short honeymoon, wasn't it? Solomon Grundy. Try to be happy here. I'll always be happy where you are, Bob. I know that. What's the matter, darling? You seem almost as if you were afraid of happiness. I just can't believe it. You know the story of the children who found the gold? And it all turned to leaves. But I won't, Bob. I hope I won't. Morning. You must be Willow. Yes. Do you take sugar in your coffee? No, thank you. Well, I'm so glad to meet you, Willow. Mr. Robert told me all about you. Well, I do believe he's brought you a present. I wonder where he put it. He's already given it to me. Pretty, isn't it? Oh, yes, that looks very nice on you. Thank you, miss. Did you enjoy the picture you saw last night? Yes, miss. What is it? You like my nightdress? It's beautiful. You like clothes, do you? I love them. Well, you can have a look in my wardrobe, if you like. I didn't have time to buy much, but the suit I got married in is there, and one or two other things. Is that considered smart in London, miss? Well, it was made by a very good dressmaker. It was expensive. Oh. I see. Next time I go shopping, I'll buy something you really approve of. Yes, miss. Will that be all, miss? Yes, thank you, Willow. Come to see my specimen? Just take a look round. As to an opal think they should be destroyed. But I find them full of interest. This one is an elephant hawk moth. Dexter caught it for me. He catches a great many of my specimens. I give him a penny or tuppence or threepence if the specimen's a particularly good one. How much was that one worth? Threepence. It's not seen much in these parts. Are you going to like Crow Hollow? I'm sure I shall. I think the house is charming. And the inhabitants? I could ask you if you like me. Before you came, we had a discussion as to whether you would be better looking than Willow. Tell me, Aunt Judith, why does she call me Miss and wear a cap and apron if she's here as a companion? Companion? Fiddlesticks. It's Opal. She's positively silly about the girl. Oh, and what about the famous spider? Aren't I going to be allowed to look at it? Of course. I didn't know you'd be interested. A naturalist correspondent.
Devine in Australia sent her to me. And he didn't know whether she would survive the trip. Oh, but spiders are amazing creatures. Practically indestructible. You don't like her? I'm afraid I just don't like any spiders. Thank you for showing me. I must come back if you want to. Good morning, Mr. Dexter. Good morning, ma'am. Good to see you here. Thank you. It's good to be here. I honor said the young master would pick a good one. And pick for himself, too. And there we are. And I'm rare pleased. That's very nice of you. But don't you let they three bully you. What? They will if they can. Why should they? Not says maybe. But you stand up to them, dearie. There's nothing like strychnine. I've just been baiting the kitchen garden. Carrots. They can't resist them in the ground. All right. Rabbits. Terrible plague they are. You want to be careful with that stuff, Miss Esther. Oh, it's the rabbits that want to be careful. I always mark my carrots with a white tape. I suppose it ought to be black. It doesn't do to interfere with nature. Well, what are you doing with yourself this morning, my dear? Oh, I don't know. I suppose I'm waiting for Robert to come home. Don't do that. Might not be back till the evening. It's a day and night job and you'll have to get used to it. You'd better come with me. I'm going down to the village to deliver some soup. Run up and get a coat. It'll be chilly in the trap. I'll get you well harness. Thank you, I will. Take it off. Aren't you going to apologize? I'm sorry, but you said I could look at your things. I didn't say you could try them on, and you know that perfectly well. Are you telling me the truth, miss, when you say that thing's considered smart? Seems kind of plain to me. I shall have to tell Miss Opal about this, do you understand? Anne, are you ready? Oh, do go away. Yes, miss. <laughs> You shouldn't come straight in here. I'm Mrs. Orme. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, hello, darling. Why didn't you let me know you were coming? Because I didn't know. Aunt Hester never gives one more than half a minute. How long is she staying in? Oh, I don't know. I've come to have lunch with you. Well, you'll have to let me finish examining my patient first. Oh, Nurse Baxter, this is my wife. And Nurse Baxter. I'll be with you in a minute. You don't eat like that at home. And there are too many people watching. How do you mean, people? Well, there's Opal, wondering if I'm despising her good food. And then there's Hester, thinking I ought to be fattened up on her soup. And then there's Judith, inspecting me from time to time as if I were one of her specimens. <laughs> Not a particularly valuable one at that. Uh, what utter nonsense. It isn't nonsense, Bob. It's absolutely true. Just as it's true that I've hardly seen you alone since we came here. Do you mean you're not happy at Crow Hollow? Sorry, but it's such a useless existence for me. I'm not allowed to do anything. I'm still being treated as a guest. As if they didn't expect me to stay very long. As if they wanted to show me that I didn't belong there. But darling, it's just your imagination. I don't care if it is. After all, I am your wife. I want to make a home for you. I want to get you your meals, wait for you at nights. Bob, couldn't we get a house in the village? Couldn't we leave Crow Hollow? I've been neglecting.
I want to introduce you to people. Uh, Diana Wilson, or Mrs. Wilson's daughter. You ought to meet her. And then perhaps you could do some horse riding. You mean we're not to leave Crow Hollow? But you're not really unhappy there. I tell you what. Next week is the golf club dance. You'll meet everybody there. And we'll buy you a new dress. I don't want a new dress. Oh, darling. I'm sorry. But I mean, if we are going to our first dance together, I'd rather go in the one I wore the night we got engaged. Remember? I hope you don't catch cold with that bare top. Oh, just like butterfly wings. I have a new butterfly Dexter caught for me. A black and yellow swallowtail. I think you'd like it, Anne. It's for Anne. Gardenias. Isn't that romantic? Dear Robert, so thoughtful of him. The garden's full of flowers. Robert could have saved his money. Shall I put them in water? No, thank you. I'll leave them in the box. Very well. Then Willow shall take them up to your room. Oh, yes. Willow wondered whether she might arrange your hair. She's too shy to ask you herself, the silly child. But she's very clever at hairdressing. <laughs> Why, of course she can do my hair. That's splendid, then. Well, now you must go and rest. It'll never do for you to be tired tonight, would it? You might try Mr. Robert's gardenias in your hair. Yes, perhaps I will. So long as I don't look too Spanish. Oh, no, I don't think so, miss. Do you go to dances, Willow? Sometimes, miss. Where? In the village? Yes. But you'd like to go to London? Maybe I would. Why don't you, then? You could get a job there. I don't mean we want you to go, but you have to think of your future. I do think of it, miss. And yet you're content to stay at Crow Hollow. Then all I can think is that you must have an interest here. Someone in the village. That's wonderful, Willow. Now I'll try the gardenias. What's wrong? The spider. The poisonous spider. It came out of the box and ran down her back. She thinks it's still on her dress. Quickly, Stand still. Don't move. Look out. My spider. It can't be. It's safely in its box. Poor Anne. She's had such a fright. Oh, Judith. Come here. How can it be? That's what I'd like to know. But where was it? In the flowers? The box had a lid. Yes, the box had a lid. Then, oh, Judith, stop fussing over the horrible thing. Thank heaven it's dead. It was my most valuable specimen. How could it have got here? Obviously, the brute escaped and found its way up here. Mercifully, nobody's been bitten. Anne might have been bitten. She's had a terrible fright. But how did the spider get out? That box can't open by itself. Someone must have let it out. Now, who would let it out? Who'd go near it except you? I didn't let it out. I didn't plan to kill anybody. Kill anybody? Oh, Judith, what a shocking thing to suggest. That's what could have happened. Anne needs a good brandy. Go down and get the bottle from the sideboard, Willow. I think Willow needs one, too. She looks quite white. Dash it all, I think we could all do with a nip. Let's go downstairs. Anne, get on your dress and come down. Don't touch me. Oh. Willow isn't going to hurt you. Pull yourself together. It wasn't an accident. It couldn't have been. I might have pinned the flowers on me and it would have been crushed and bitten me. Now, would you all go, please? Uh, we'll be done presently. Uh, Anne will be all right in a moment. It wasn't an accident. Darling, what else could it have been? Someone put the spider there. It may have been meant just to frighten me. It may have been. Darling, what possible reason can you have for thinking that? Oh, no reason. Just intuition. They don't want me here. I've always known it. Darling, you're hysterical now. You, you don't know what you're saying. You think it was an accident too, don't you? Because it couldn't conceivably have been anything else. Honestly, Anne, you must believe that. Who would be fooling around with a deadly poisonous spider for, for a joke? All right, Bob. The joke's on the spider. Well, put your dress on, there's a dear. Do we have to go to the dance? Well, after you've had some dinner, you'll be all right. Well, I... Not that dress, Bob. I couldn't wear it now. Give me my black one out of the wardrobe. But I don't feel like dancing. You'll be all right in a couple of hours.
Robert. Hello, Diana. And this is Diana Wilson. Uh, you met her mother before. Uh, at the hospital. How do you do? You stay here, Robert. I want to have a private chat with your wife. Come on. You women. All right, but ten minutes. No more. Well, it was pretty sudden for both of us. We just knew how lucky you were. Miss Wilson, please call me Diana. Thank you. Can you tell me why your mother warned me not to come to Crow Hollow? Did she? Well, Mother loved to be melodramatic, poor darling. Now I can't think why she should say that. Did she scare you? Well, I was pretty nervous anyway. Robert has so many aunts. There is only one reason I can think of. That's a pretty feeble one for a person of my mother's intellect. Robert says she was wandering that night. That might explain it. You see, she wasn't too pleased with Robert's answer. They'd more or less stolen her maid. Not Willow. Yes. The beautiful Willow. Not that I had much affection for her myself. But Mother had trained her from a little scrap of a thing. She wasn't a bit pleased when the aunts bribed her to go to Crow Hollow. Bribed her? Mother said they did. That Willow was to get all sorts of wonderful things. Tell me, did she? Well, she certainly isn't treated like an ordinary maid. She's more like the daughter of the house. Incidentally, who are her parents? Is she a local? Well, she's got a family over in Dulchester, but it's a bit of a mystery about her. I believe she was adopted. Her mother came from a good family and managed to conceal her arrival. Do you like her? I really can't tell whether she's very simple or very deep. Either way, it's too much. That's exactly how I feel about her. Although she's decorative, all right. Mother used to say the aunts had better watch out, or the next thing, Robert would... But he wasn't that sort. Let's go back. I'm sorry you didn't enjoy your evening. I'm sorry I was such a bore. Oh, darling Anne, you couldn't be a bore if you tried. I seem to have bored someone at Crow Hollow enough for them to want to kill me. Darling, it was an accident. You mustn't let your imagination run away with you. Why won't you understand? But I do understand. You've had a dreadful experience, I know that. No, not about the spider. All right, it was an accident, if you like, and no one is trying to get rid of me. But I still don't want to go on living at Crow Hollow. Darling, we've had all this before. I don't want to be unreasonable. I'm not asking you to send your aunts away, although I think as your wife I should have the right to. All I'm asking for is a home of my own. But Crow Hollow is my home. It's right that I should bring you here as mistress of it. Mistress? Well, I can't plan a menu, change a picture, or even darn one of your socks. Well, I think Aunt Opal might let you darn a sock occasionally. It's not a joke, Bob. I know it's not. But you see, I can't leave Crow Hollow. Grandfather left it to me on condition that I should provide a home for his three daughters. He was devoted to them and very worried about their futures. Before he died, I promised that as long as they lived, I would make a home for them here. I must do as he wanted. Can't you see that? And won't you help me? If it means so much to you, of course, my darling. I'll try to be happy here. I'll really try. Tea's ready, miss. Really? 
really too bad about her. She knew how much it meant to him, and then to throw it away deliberately. I never liked her. She had a shifty look from the first. I'm surprised he recovered at all. They've all got the constitution of water rats. It would take more than Marguerite to finish him. What did Marguerite do that was so terrible? Threw away the soup that I'd made her old father when he was too weak to stop her. Do you know the Potters? I didn't think you'd met them. No, I don't think I have. I, I thought... Good thing, too. I shouldn't go out of your way to meet them if I were you. What did you think? I thought you were talking about Marguerite. We were. Robert's mother. Whatever made you think of her? We don't talk about Marguerite anymore. No, of course not. It's silly of me, but I've been thinking about her lately. How do you think about someone you've never known? It's a kind of fellow feeling. She was a stranger here, too. You mustn't think of yourself as a stranger here, Anne. Did she like Crow Hollow? No, she didn't. She wasn't one of us, you see. But, but Aunt Opal, I'm not one of you either. My mm. dear, you're Robert's wife. But she was your brother's wife. Half-brother, Anne. A very different thing. We had nothing in common at all. I'm sorry to say that Robert's father was not at all of a satisfactory character. So, of course, we didn't feel bound to take to his wife. Poor Marguerite. Tomorrow's my night to go to Dorchester. Is that all right? Yes. You know, Anne, once a month, Willow goes to spend the night with her parents. She returns the following night. Robert has always driven her to the station and met her again. Do you think he'll be able to tomorrow? Well, of course, unless someone's having a baby or something awkward like that. Then that's all right, then, Willow. Thank you. Robert's always been so good to Willow. He looks upon her more as a friend. Such a nice attitude. Robert never was a snob. But then Willow is no ordinary servant. Mm, she walks like a cat. Have you ever noticed that rhythmic grace? She's a very sensuous creature. Don't use those queer adjectives, Judith. She's a very good-looking girl. I'm sure I don't know what we should do without her. Is Miss Judith in there? Oh, it's you, Dexter. Yes, she's just finished tea. It's a beauty, isn't it? Amanita phalloides. Yes, it's very beautiful. It's for Miss Judith, is it? Deadly poisonous. Animals won't go near it. Nor insects. Only for fecula or recula. Hmm? Earwigs, miss. They don't mind. Oh, I see. They've been at you. I told you, you've got to stand up to them. Oh, but so far, they've been very nice to me. I don't see why they should want to bully me. Excuse me, miss. Come into the kitchen. Well, they weren't none too pleased at his going and marrying a stranger. Who would they have liked him to marry? Someone from these parts, I reckon. But you don't want to take no notice on him. They weren't none too pleased when his father married, neither. And she were as pretty a young maid as you could wish. Did you know her? Of course I did. I lived here, man and boy, 57 years. And she lived in the same house with the three of them, just like me? Aye, she lived here. And she died here. Her grave's just yonder in the old graveyard. That used to be part of the farm, but they sold it. 1840, I think it were. Well, surely you don't remember that. No. <laughs> My father told me. What did she die of, Dexter? Ah, that's a mystery, miss. Nobody seemed to know, not even old Dr. Armour. They said it was some kind of low fever she'd picked up in foreign parts. Marguerite, widow of Douglas Armour, departed this life June 23rd, 1925, in the 26th year of her life, to her rightful home. Her rightful home. Hello, darling. What happened to you? I got wet. Were you out in all that rain? You have taken shelter. Can't have you laid up. Bob? Hmm? What did your mother die of? Well, darling, that was 25 years ago. Why do you ask? I want to know. Well, it was a fever of some kind. 
Nothing hereditary, if that's what you're worried about. Was she very unhappy? Well, darling, I don't know. But why this sudden interest? Are you going to write a story of... Hey, just a minute, let me look at you. A shivering. Oh, it's nothing. Is your headache? Not badly. You sit down for a minute. But I'm perfectly all right. I just got wet. Open your mouth. I'll tell you in half a second whether you're all right or not, but by the look of you, I'd say you had a chill. Have you been out walking? No, no I... don't try and speak. Just nod your head. Where did you go? The river? Fry's Woods. Shopping. What do you want, Willa? Miss Opal asked me to see if Mr. Robert had come in. Well, you can see that he has, can't you? Now, just a minute, Willow. Give me some hot water bottles ready and light a fire in our bedroom. Are you ill? Quickly. Off you go. Well, of course I'm not ill. I just got wet. You've got a temperature and I'm packing you right off to bed. To bed, oh, Bob. Doctor's orders. But I... And if you resist, I'll carry you. I'm so sure that I shouldn't carry you anyway. What is it, dear? Do you want something? It's nothing, Aunt Opal. I wondered if Robert were here. He had to go out. He was dreadfully sorry, but he got word that that pneumonia case was worse. He said he might be some time, but you were not to worry. You feeling a little better, dear? I thought I was, but... Oh, I know what the trouble is exactly. You need something to eat. You must be quite starved. Hester was making you some soup. I'll just pop down and see if it's ready. It must have been telepathy. Invalid feeling a little better, eh? Now, just sit up a little. There, that's... Ah. Now, I shall put the cup there. And mind you eat up the soup, every drop. Thank you, Aunt Hester. Looks delicious. It is delicious. There are eight different vegetables in it. I experimented a great deal with different blends to get just the right flavour. Isn't it a little bitter? Bitter? Nonsense. Bitter, very bland soup. I expect your palate's a bit off. I expect so. Well, I'll leave you to eat it at your leisure. I'll come back later. It's too bad. The soup. They've poisoned it. They want to kill me. Don't let them bob. We shall live at Crow Hollow. There used to be hundreds of crows there. They were supposed to bring ill luck to the house. Don't let him take you to Crow 
hollow. It's no good to either of you. Why, do you always have to kill things, Judith? It's Marguerite, Robert's mother. soup up, every drop. Bitter nonsense. It's a very bland soup. Much better, thank goodness. Do you feel any pain? Not exactly. A little tender. I feel so weak. And you will for a few days. A few days? It was my fault. I should have realized that that chill might upset your stomach. But you couldn't know, Bob. Why not? You couldn't know I was going to be poisoned. No, darling. It was the soup immediately no, after I'd eaten it. Darling, you mustn't talk anymore. I'm going to warm you up some milk. And after you've had that, you might sleep again. It was the soup. All right, darling, it was the soup. But you mustn't worry about it now. We'll talk about that when you're stronger. Who is it? Willow? Yes, miss. You slink about like a snake. A very pretty snake. Have you lost something, miss? No, not lost, mislaid. My new toadstool. I remember I had it in the drawing room and then I came in here. I can't remember if I brought it with me. Was it a spotted one? Yes, have you seen it? I thought I noticed it on the dresser yesterday. But it's not there now. Mm, perhaps it's fallen down. No, it's not here. This is one of Hester's, isn't it? That's right, miss. Dangerous thing to leave lying about, isn't it? You never know what it might get into. Feeling better after that nice long sleep? No, we'll be coming on nicely now. Did my husband find out about the soup, nurse? Well, you see, the trouble was it was made in a little dish. Only just enough for one. The bowl had been washed when doctor came home. Well, then there's no proof. And doctor says not. <laughs> Your aunt is pretty indignant, too, at aspersions being cast on her soup. Do you think I was poisoned, nurse? Well, now, if you were. Being sick like that so quickly would save you from any serious consequences. No, doctor says it was most likely the result of your chill. I keep hearing a noise outside. Harsh sort of noise. Oh, that's those crows. But a lot of them about today, since the rain. This place used to be infested with crows. It was before my time, though. And it almost looks as if they were coming back. Good evening. Good evening, nurse. And how's our patient? She's coming along splendidly. I expect you'd like a rest. Thank you, doctor. I'll be in the kitchen if you need me. Had a busy day, darling. Pretty hectic. How's the pneumonia case? Oh, he'll pull through. I'm glad. Thank you for sending nurse Baxter. Well, you needed a nurse. I thought it better to have somebody you knew. You're feeling more comfortable now. Eh? Mm, I'm feeling fine. How long can Nurse Baxter stay? Oh, a few days. We'll be up and about by then. Bob, that soup. Darling, there's absolutely no proof about the soup. I know there's no proof. That's all part of the cleverness, only you refuse to see it. Someday you'll know I was right. It's not too late. You stop worrying. It's bad for you. Don't worry. As long as Nurse Baxter cooks my meals. Mm, that's all right. How many crows are there in the elms now? Oh, I don't know. Quite a lot. It's extraordinary the way they've come back. Lying here listening to them, I think I'll go mad. Oh, darling, it's not as bad as that. Well, it's not the noise they make. It's what they mean. Now oh, you're just being plain superstitious. I keep thinking about your mother. 
What made her die? Nothing remotely connected with what's wrong with you. Bob, I promised not to worry you anymore, but couldn't we go away from here? There's something about this house, and, and now the crows have come back. You concentrate on getting well. We'll talk about it then. But we won't. You'll always evade it. You'll never leave Crow Hollow, will you? to tell you because I want you to do one small favor for me. Yes, miss. When there's no one about, telephone Joe Higgins to wait at the main gates at half past five. The train goes at six, so that should be plenty of time. So you're not telling them you're going? Not at the moment. I don't want to fuss. They do fuss, don't they? They've all been very kind to me. I feel I want to get away for a bit. I like the other dress best. The one you wore the night you got the spider on you. Do you, Willow? If it's any use to you, you can have it. Can I really? Oh, thank you. What's that? It's a cocktail hat. Quite useless, really. It's pretty. I think you're very wise, miss. Wise? To go away. Do you? Funny things happen in this house, don't they? What kind of things do you mean? You ought to know, miss. Do you know anything about them, Willow? Oh, no. But I think you're very wise. Well, I'll telephone now. Wouldn't do to miss your train, would it? Two, three, please. Yes, that's right. All ready, miss. The coast's clear now if you want to slip out. Miss Opal's lying down. Miss Hester's in the greenhouse, and Miss Judith's in her laboratory. Thank you, Willow. You've done very well. Come and sit down for a while. You know, you're in no fit state to travel. I think you'd better come back with me. You know, I must go. I've got to catch the train. Nonsense. You can get the next one if it's so important. Come on back to my place for a rest. Look, I'll tell you all I know, which isn't very much and which I think is fantastic. You see, Mother had the fixed idea that ever since Robert's aunts were so insistent about getting Willow, that they hoped Robert would marry her. I wonder why. She's very lovely, I know, but hardly a good match for him. Or even a particularly suitable wife, for that matter. Maybe they weren't thinking so much of Robert. Perhaps it had something to do with Willow's parentage. Her mother might have been a great friend of theirs. Or one of them. One of the aunts Willow's mother? Surely not. Well, I'm only supposing. 
But surely a mother couldn't live in the same house and not treat her as a daughter. Well, you once said they did, but I mean openly. I'm sure I couldn't. This isn't London. You've no idea how strong prejudices are in the country against affairs of that kind. Well, anyway, whether they had any matrimonial plans or not, the important thing is that Robert obviously wasn't having any. I suppose not. You're the only woman he's ever really cared for. You can take that from me. Yes, I think that's true. I'll just slip in quietly if I can, and thank you for everything. Take care of yourself. Oh, let these crows give you the willies. Mm, they did at first, but I'm getting used to them now. Good luck. to be me. When did you find her? Just now, when I came in. I would say that death took place during the last half an hour. She had face cream on her hands as though she was making up. Do the aunts know? One of the aunts must know. Am I going to be late for dinner? I was so anxious to finish taking the chrysanthemums. I got a rabbit this evening. A fine big buck. There he lay, stretched out stiff, with his nose still on the nibbled carrot. Aunt Hester. Willow! 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 Oh, Robert, have you seen Willow? Then what's the matter? I've got something to tell you. Willow's in our bedroom. Dead. With a knife in her back. And had you observed anything significant between your husband and deceased? But I tell you, it wasn't Willow who was meant to be killed, it was me. Whoever did it mistook her for me. She was in my room, sitting at my dressing table, wearing my dress. With fair hair. Whereas well, yours is dark. They'd need to be extremely short-sighted to mistake her hair for yours, whatever she was wearing. Why should anyone want to kill Willow? She was valued a great deal here, and I wasn't. That could be a reason, too. I don't understand what you mean. Do you recognize this? The deceased was wearing it. Do you know where she got it? Yes, my husband gave it to her. Was your husband in the habit of giving her presents? From time to time. They all were. She was always treated as a member of the family. Do you know why? It's hardly usual for a maid, is it? She wasn't a usual kind of maid. I believe it was something to do with her parentage. She was adopted, wasn't she? by a couple in Dorchester. Do you know anything about them, Sergeant? Well, there was a rumour that the father used to be a gardener up here in the old doctor's time. Jed Dawson. I don't suppose you remember him, sir. A gardener? And the mother? I don't know, sir. That was kept very dark. Miss Wilson said that the mother came from a good family. That she might have been a friend of the Armour's. Well, we'll go into that. I should think Miss Wilson might know about it, sir. Dawson went to Mrs. Wilson's after he left Crow Hollow. That'll be all for now, Mrs. Armour. Uh, what a terrible thing. I heard from Jenkins. I called over to see whether there was anything I could do to help. Oh, it's very nice of you. What did he say? He wouldn't believe that Willow was killed in mistake for me. Is that what you think? Well, she was in our room, wearing Anne's dress. And with her back to the door. He said no one could mistake Willow's hair for mine, but in a bad light. No, the sun was shining. There must be an explanation. I know I'm right. 
Darling, Diana thought that you might like to spend a few days with her until... Yes, won't you? You look so terribly tired and you might sleep better away from here. Well, that's very kind of you, but they said no one was to leave the house. But that doesn't apply to you, darling. Of course it does. I'm their principal suspect. Oh, no. What nonsense, darling. What did he say? They know who Willow's father is. Who is it? Jed Dawson, I think they said. Never heard of him. Do they think he did it? I told you. They think I did it. Oh, of course they don't. Who is he, Dawson? He was a gardener who worked here who left to go to your mother. My mother? I don't remember anyone of that name. That might have given her an entirely different reason for warning me not to come to Crow Hollow. Oh, Anne, no, that's not possible. Would you come in a moment, please, Doctor? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, by the way, Sergeant, would it be all right if my wife spent a couple of days with Miss Wilson? Right. She could come over again whenever you wanted her. Not yet, sir. Sorry, but no one must leave until we get this matter cleared up. Except, of course, for any professional calls for yourself. Yes, but look here. Yes. I'm sorry, sir. You can ask the inspector, but I know what he'll say. Did you say Jed Dawson was Willow's father? So Sergeant Jenkins says. Oh, you remember that gardener father sat. He was a bad lot, right enough. Fancy that. I suppose father found out and then trumped up that excuse about the plants being stolen. So that's where Willow got her looks. He was a handsome devil. Oh, he was a fine-looking chap. Masses of fair curly hair. But he was vain of it. Wouldn't wear a cap, rain or shine for fear of hiding his pretty hair. A cap? So that's how Willow was mistaken for me. I left a hat on my bed today, a silly, extravagant thing, all flowers. Just the sort of thing that Willow would want to try on. And with her hair up, it would have been completely hidden by the hat. Don't you see? Now are you convinced, Inspector? It's a possibility, certainly. It's more than that. It's obvious. Can't you see that? Doctor. Do you ever make a diagnosis without considering all the symptoms? No, but neither do I allow myself to be convinced without taking into consideration all the facts. But you've got all the facts. Some of them. The rest are supposition. And meanwhile, my wife's life is in danger. Do you think they'll try again? Well, how on earth should I know? But the danger's there. This is the third attempt. Well, I shall be leaving a man here. And if you have another spare room, I should suggest Miss Wilson stayed here so that you could keep an eye on Mrs. Armour if you were called out on a case. Well, there's only Willow's room. Would you mind, Diana? No, of course not. Thank you. I should feel a lot happier. All right. It's for Robert, dear. The telephone. Robert's wanted. Who is it? Mrs. Matthews, dear. The baby you delivered yesterday. Well, what's wrong with it? Not the baby. The mother. She's running a high temperature. Come into the kitchen before you go and have a cup of coffee. It's already made. I'm just going down and I'll have it ready for you. I'll be as quick as I can. You go into Diana's room, wake her, and stay with her all the time I'm away. Promise? I promise, but... But what? I don't know. It's just... Well, I can't explain it, Bob. It's this ungodly hour, darling. You've had a disturbed night. Yes, I suppose that's it. Come on. I'll take you to Diana's room. I'll be back just as soon as I possibly can, before you and Diana have woken up again. I'm sorry, Bob, but I've got the jitters. I guess it's the early morning. Mm. What is it? I've had a telephone message to go out to a case. May I leave Anne with you? Yes, of course. Come on in, won't you? I was awake anyway. Those crows are enough to wake the dead. I shan't be long. Bye-bye, darling. And don't worry. Did you sleep? On and off? 
You? Mm, like a log, till those damn birds started caterwauling. The telephone! What about it? What's the matter? Did you hear it? No. Now that you mention it, I didn't. Who brought him the message? Bob! 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 It's a trick. The telephone didn't ring. You mustn't go. A trick? They want to get you out of the way so they can kill me. And what an extraordinary thing to say. Is it true? I'll find out, Robert. It was Judith who answered the telephone. She called out to me that you were wanted urgently. Perhaps I misunderstood. I'll go and ask her. First, let me pour Anne a cup of coffee. She looks frozen. You drink yours, Robert, before it gets cold. Bob, don't believe it. They want to kill me. Now sit down, Anne, and have some coffee, as Aunt Opal says. We'll get to the bottom of this in a moment. Silly child. Who wants to kill you now? Bob, don't drink it! Are you going to listen to a hysterical girl? Certainly I am. Anne's intuitions are pretty sound. I should have listened to her a long time ago. Don't be such a fool, Robert. What do you think's in the coffee? Toadstool poisoning? Judith... You can't put this on Judith, Aunt Opal. It was Judith's spider and Hester's soup. But it's your coffee. Entirely yours. Except that it has some of Aunt Hester's strychnine in it. Why should you want to kill me, Aunt Opal? Why shouldn't I? Why should either of you live now that Willow's dead? I always intended you to marry Willow so that she should be mistress of Crow Hollow, not her. Yes, I tried to kill her too, so that you should be free again, free to marry Willow. But instead I killed my own daughter. My daughter, Willow. I think I shall have to call the police, Aunt Opal. like this. Don't go back, darling. What are you writing, darling? Well, Diana's coming to dinner tomorrow. I'm planning a menu. What are you writing? Oh, this, it's an application for a post at the Middlesex. Junior house surgeon. You'd be glad to get away, wouldn't you? Let me see. Ah. I don't think Grandfather would have approved, do you? Are you sure? Quite sure? Quite sure, darling. 